is really fun to talk to you in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. um, you had a pretty horrendous experience as a nurse when you worked at Winnipeg Children's Hospital in 1994 mm -hmm. and um, experienced what happens to a nurse when doctors and a system made up of people who kind of venerate doctors don't mm -hmm. listen to nurses. And you were the chief OR nurse at, at Winnipeg Children's when this happened. Mm -hmm. and so you were, you'd were you been an OR nurse for how many years? i have been an OR nurse at that point in time for about over 20 years, between 20 and 25 years. So I had a lot of experience. So what did you know? I mean, what did you know? Like, you had a, 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 a surgeon who wasn't competent. Mm -hmm. And what did you know? So you weren't doing the surgery, but I think you once told me that you knew every step of what had to be mm -hmm. done in that surgery. I mean, what are the kinds of things that that you know as an OR nurse or knew as an OR nurse that that people don't realize that you know? Well, I think as an OR nurse, you're standing there next to a surgeon. You're his literally his right hand uh, or at his right hand most of the time, and you're seeing pretty much what he's seeing. You're, um, if you're an experienced OR nurse, you're anticipating what he's going to do before he even thinks about it sometimes. And so I think as you gain experience in an operating room, you get to see which surgeons have what they call good hands and which don't, and which of them need um, maybe a little more assistance from maybe a senior a senior surgeon or even uh, another surgeon just to be there with them to assist them initially when they're getting started in their careers anyways. and. Um, after a few years, you can figure out what the surgeon's going to want, and you can, um, it, you almost do it without thinking. And so when you see a surgeon struggle, and you see a lot of bleeding, for instance, or uh, damage to the anatomy, that, you know, in this case it was hearts, you, you're well aware of that. You don't have to be a physician to be aware of, you know, that things aren't going, aren't going well. That intuition is, um, it's not coming from women's intuition. That intuition is really pattern recognition and based on experience. Right. Yeah. It, it's yeah. Intuition probably isn't the right word. It's experience. It's knowledge. It's knowing what should be taking place. Knowing how a particular operation should go. You know, from start to finish. And uh, if you do one, one say a particular operation, a certain kind of repair, for instance, ten or twelve times, you know what the steps are. You know what the outcomes should be. And when you see over and over again, this the problems within you know within that particular um, type of surgery, you know that there's something wrong with with the surgeon and his skill. And so, but I mean, I think that's an interesting point because you're saying that the surgeon, you know, when someone needs help, but the system, the when. I think that the surgeons take that as a shameful thing as opposed to a learning thing. Right. It was interesting because I worked in a teaching hospital. And so as a senior nurse in the operating room, I would be expected if there was a resident, say a senior resident who was maybe a month out of, away from graduating and finishing uh, and becoming you know, a full staff person. If he got into trouble in the operating room, I was expected to go out and find someone because they would leave them alone to do things on their own. I'd be expected to go out and find someone to come in and help him and get him out of his whatever situation he was in. A month or six weeks down the road when this guy is now a, a staff member, you know, I had to, you know, you have to be very careful how you approach him in that capacity because he's no longer a resident. And yet, only a month or two has gone by. He's no more experienced really in the end than he was when he was a resident. But now that he's a staff doctor, he's got his letters behind his name and his, his the, you know, the diploma or whatever. Um, it was a whole different uh, scenario if I had a concern about a, a staff man that was different than, and I had to be careful what I said in terms of how I approached maybe a more senior uh, physician in, in regards to my concerns. Not like going and talking about and saying, you know, your resident right. is getting into trouble. You know, go in there and help him out. That was expected of me. Yeah. You know, they expected me to do that. And the best surgeons that I worked with, the best physicians I worked with, were the ones who, when they first started out, and I would see them, you know, I would see them as residents, I'd see them come back sometimes as staff people, and they would have their senior staff person or a senior surgeon in with them the first few times they did a particular operation, just to 
sort of help them. Those were the guys that I really respected because they they knew what their limitations were and they knew that they didn't want to put their patient at risk. They wanted somebody there who, you know, if they did get into a little bit of trouble, could help them, yeah. you know, right. help them get through it. Right. Whereas um, with this particular cardiac surgeon that I work with, uh, he uh, had no insight into that kind of thing, and he thought, you know, he would just go in and right. do it. So and the macho yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But also the system supported that. Yes, much. yes, they did. Yeah, they yeah. did. And they certainly didn't support us when we first... As right. nurses went in with our concerns uh, and spoke to other physicians, uh, I was told basically, you know, what do you know? You're just a nurse. You yeah. Know, you've heard yeah. this before. So, uh, and I'm sure lots of other nurses have heard that same kind of thing. What advice do you have to, to nurses today who find themselves in that kind of situation after your experience? What would you tell them to do? That's a hard question. I think for me... I felt that I had to be able to look myself in the in the mirror, look at myself in the mirror, and I had to do what I felt was was right. And I, I mean, I, I put my job on the line. Um, but I, I don't know that I could ask every other nurse to do that. I think each nurse has to. I, I would hope that each nurse would go forward with her concerns, but uh, I know that uh, it's a very uh, intimidating process to to go in and, and talk about your concerns in regards to maybe the uh, competence of, uh, of a physician. In the Do hospital. you feel that nurses should have more training in nursing school and things like conflict resolution or possible scenarios for, you know, I mean, there's a lot of teamwork training done now and and focus on training people and how to, well, to practice every, this kind of situation. I think everybody should. That's yeah. in that kind of a situation. Maybe we all should, not just nurses, right. physicians, nurses. everybody right. should have some training in conflict resolution and dealing with uh, the stressful situations and the, well, I guess the conflicts that, that uh, yeah. and they do come up. You know, I mean, this was sort of a, an extreme example of what can happen, you know, because, uh, well, first of all, there's a lot of publicity, and secondly, there's babies dying, and, right. you know, it was horrific, but on a daily basis, there are things that go on in yeah. a hospital that nurses see, and probably sometimes, you know, maybe turn a blind eye to, just because they know what kind of hassle they're in for if they do, you know, go right. forward with their concerns, and a lot of nurses said to me, you know, we're really proud of you, but man, if that was me... I don't think I could have done what you did to somebody yeah. because, you know, I saw what they did to you yeah. and I wouldn't want them to do that to me. So basically what you're saying is that the system has to basically say to nurses, we expect you to do this and we will support you if you do this and we will reward you if you do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what happens in, in aviation yeah. now, you know, right. where you're expected in a situation like you were and you're yeah. expected to say something and right. they will support you and they yeah. will reward you. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's a systemic issue. You know, it wasn't just the surgeon, you know, it was right. the whole system. I mean, the surgeon was the, cent the center of the problem, but it was a system where he was supported or, well, not supported so much as left to fend for himself. Yeah. And, you know, uh, nobody was in charge. And uh, it was a, a system failure as well as, you know, right. this particular surgeon. And they say for, for most um, accidents or, or critical incidents or occurrences in the hospital, you can look back and it will be you know, something to do with the system. It won't right. just be right. one person, person or right. two people. It will be right. a systemic thing. So. And, and I think part of the system problem is that doctors aren't taught when they find themselves in over their heads to say help. Yeah, They're taught right. that to say, I need help. You know, you shouldn't be leaving me alone right. here is like a, a, a shameful thing. Yes, right? Thank you so much oh, for your time. Welcome.